Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 6th of May. Three terrorists neutralized an encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir once surrenders. Heavy flooding in Afghanistan kills at least 37 people. And Nepali Congress refuses to back PM Oli as he loses majority in parliament. And now for all the details. Security forces on Thursday neutralized three terrorists affiliated to Al Badr terror outfit in an encounter in Shopian district of India's Jammu and Kashmir. Police said one of the terrorists also surrendered during the gunfight upon the plea of the security forces. Three terrorists were killed while one surrendered before security forces during an encounter in Shopian district of India's Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday. The encounter broke out after security forces had launched a cordon and search operation in Kanigam area in Shopian in the wee hours of Thursday based on specific inputs. The Jammu and Kashmir police said while one of the terrorists surrendered on their plea, three others turned down the offer and opened fire at the security forces. The forces retaliated, eventually leading to killing of the three terrorists affiliated to Al Badr terror outfit. Search operations in the area continued till the last reports came in. India has long accused Pakistan of arming and infiltrating terrorists from across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Pakistan, however, denies the charges. India's COVID-19 tally surpassed 21 million on Thursday as 412,262 new cases were registered across the country in the past 24 hours. At the time when infection cases continue to peak in the country every day, federal government has ruled out a complete lockdown to contain the worsening situation, though some states have imposed night curfews or partial lockdowns. India's COVID-19 tally surpassed 21 million on Thursday as 412,262 new cases were registered across the country in the past 24 hours, the health ministry said. This is the second time this month that over 400,000 cases have been registered in a single day. The COVID-19 figures continue to peak in the country every day as the federal government has ruled out a complete lockdown to contain the worsening situation though some states have imposed night curfews or partial lockdowns. The way the numbers are increasing, even the positivity rate is increasing. We had touched as low as 4-5%, it is again now crossing 20%, 25% in many states, including Delhi. So, uh, I hope we are able to curtail it down. Meanwhile, in a positive sign amid the crisis, India has welcomed US President Joe Biden's support for a proposal to waive intellectual property rights for COVID-19 vaccines to help make them available to more people more quickly. India and South Africa have led a proposal at the WTO to waive protections for some patents and technology and boost vaccine production in developing countries. As of now, there are two types of vaccines, Covishield and Covaxin, which are being administered to the people in India. India has also received its first doses of the Russian-made Sputnik V vaccine last week. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan is in talks with the International Monetary Fund to try to ease tough conditions on its US 6 billion US dollars loan. The country's finance minister Shaukat Tareen on Wednesday informed that the global money lender has been informed that Pakistan didn't currently have the capacity to raise its tariffs or taxes under IMF program, adding that the World Bank and IMF had been sympathetic to the point of view. 
Pakistan is in talks with the International Monetary Fund or IMF to try to ease tough conditions on a $6 billion loan, Finance Minister Shaukat Tareen said on Wednesday. Addressing his first press conference in Islamabad after assuming the charge as Finance Minister, Tarin said, Pakistan has not yet come out of the IMF program. We have discussed with them and told them that our revenues were increasing at 92 percent. But the third wave of COVID-19 came and they decreased after that. The South Asian nation of 220 million people posted consumer price inflation at 11.1 percent in April, the highest in 11 months. हमारा आम आदमी जो है वो बिल्कुल तंग आ चुका है ये सारी महंगाई 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 और इसका कैस्केडिंग इफेक्ट होता है आप बढ़ा दें फ्यूल चार्जेस वगैरह आपको एकदम इन्फ्लेशन जो है वो बढ़ना शुरू हर चीज पे आज लागू होती है दिस कम्स एज पाकिस्तान इज सीइंग रिकॉर्ड नंबर्स ऑफ कोविड-19 डेथ्स एंड इंफेक्शंस एंड सो द कंट्री हैज शट नॉन एसेंशियल बिजनेस एंड ट्रांसपोर्ट फॉर ऑलमोस्ट 2 वीक्स स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम मे 5 the aim is to contain the spread of new coronavirus infections during the Eid al-Fitr Muslim festival when hundreds of people will be offering mass prayers. With minus 0.4 GDP growth last year, Pakistan has revised growth projections to 3% for fiscal 2021 year. The IMF, however, says GDP is likely to grow only at 1.5%, suggesting the country may have to dampen its economic growth expectations. In news from Afghanistan, an official in the Afghanistan's High Council for National Reconciliation, Farida Momand, has called for political consensus and said that mistrust between the political leaders, the people and the government has been the fundamental obstacle to strengthen peace. Farida Mohmand, a member of Afghanistan's High Council of National Reconciliation on Wednesday, called for political consensus and said that mistrust between the political leaders, the people and the government has been fundamental obstacle to strengthen peace. It is very important that the Afghan government moves towards talks with a political consensus, otherwise there will be no benefit of the talks and the Taliban will exploit it, Mohmand said according to local media reports. This comes days after President Ashraf Ghani met with a number of political leaders as part of consultations on peace. The presidential palace said that the meetings were aimed at promoting further cooperation and consensus between the government and the political elites. Meanwhile, the pullout by the American troops has begun, with US President Joe Biden announcing all troops will be out by September 11. Although the United States did not meet the May 1 deadline, agreed in talks with the Taliban last year. Critics of the decision to withdraw say the Islamist militants will try to sweep back into power. More news from Afghanistan. Heavy rains brought severe flooding to nine provinces around Afghanistan in recent days, killing at least 37 people, some of them children, officials said on Tuesday. According to local government, at least 12 people were killed as heavy rains and flash floods hit parts of western province of Herat that began on Sunday. In western Gore province, at least 10 people, including 6 children, were killed by flood waters that flowed from area mountains. The spokesman for Afghanistan's Natural Disaster Ministry, Tamim Azizi, said over 405 families were displaced in different provinces around the country. The flooding is said to have come from overflowing rivers. Rescue personnel are working at the affected areas and scores of local households have so far been evacuated to safe areas. Moving on to news from Nepal. The Nepali Congress has refused to back Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli during the confidence vote that he faces in the House of Representatives on May 10. This came after CPN Mao Center led by Pushpa Kamal Dahal officially withdrew support to Oli-led government, leaving it without a majority in the parliament. Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli rushed to the residence of Sher Bahadur Deoba, the chief of the main opposition Nepali Congress party, on Wednesday to seek his support in the confidence vote that Oli faces in the House of Representatives. 
Reports suggest Deoba and other leaders of his party rejected Oli's appeal, which came on the same day that the CPN Maoist Center, led by Pushpa Kamal Dehel, officially withdrew support to the government, leaving it without a majority in the House. Nepal's President Bidya Devi Bhandari earlier this week summoned special session of the lower house of the parliament, where Oli is scheduled to take a vote of confidence on May 10. From Wednesday onwards, lawmakers have been undergoing COVID-19 tests ahead of the parliamentary meeting. Since the ruling CPN UML has a total of 121 lawmakers out of 275, Prime Minister Oli is short of a minimum 15 lawmakers to save his government. Nepali Congress has 63 and CPN Moy Center has 49 seats. More news from Nepal. Nepal has banned all domestic flights while international flights would be grounded from Wednesday midnight until May 14 with the possibility of extension due to a surge in COVID-19 cases. The international terminal of Nepal's Tribhuvan International Airport on Wednesday remained packed with travellers who wanted to fly out before the airport is closed. Nepal is set to suspend international flights from midnight on May 6 due to a surge in COVID-19 cases. The international terminal of Nepal's Tribhuvan International Airport in capital Kathmandu on Wednesday remained packed with travellers who wanted to fly out before the airport is closed. Long queues were seen at various check-in counters outside the terminal as Nepali as well as foreigners tried to fly out of the country amid uncertainty when the flights would be back to schedule. On Sunday, a cabinet meeting had decided to stop international flights amid surging cases of COVID-19 in the Himalayan nation. The Civil Aviation Authority earlier this week stated that chartered flights and two flights from Indian capital New Delhi in a week would be exempted because of the air bubble scheme between the countries. Nepal has made it mandatory to produce RT-PCR negative test report conducted 72 hours before boarding the flight. Meanwhile, with the onset of major tourism season in the Himalayan nation, hundreds of climbers are vying to scale the world's tallest peak, Mount Everest. Reports have surfaced that some mountaineers from the Mount Everest base camp have tested positive for COVID-19, which could disrupt the annual climb up Mount Everest and other Himalayan peaks. Paused for a year in 2020, Nepal this year has issued record high permits to scale Mount Everest. With India feeling the brunt of the COVID-19 pandemic, several individuals and groups are stepping up to provide healthy meals for the patients and their families. Have a look. Indians are coming forward to help COVID-19 patients in their time of need as India suffers from a raging pandemic. In India, mostly urban areas have faced the brunt of the pandemic and with lockdown or other restrictions, it is getting very difficult for the patients to get healthy food. When philanthropist Rahul Kaul from India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory shared his wish to help such people with his mother, she was more than enthusiastic to join him in this interview. Patients are diabetic, some people have to eat it, or some people have to eat it, who have to eat it, so if we take it from a vendor, we have to eat it. It's not possible, especially at this time. So we thought that we would make food from our homes, we would get clean food, at least the balanced diet required will be reached. A human resources professional from Delhi's satellite city, Kasia Bad, is also not very far behind. She decided to utilize additional time on her hands after work to help patients and other families. A restaurant more than two decades old in Agra, the Taj Mahal city, is also working on the same lines, providing 150 to 250 meals at a time to those in need. Today, the work is not coming to the human being, we will do it with it. Then I came to my mind, why don't we prepare a postage of a postage of a postage and send it to the 
ताकि हम उन लोगों को मदद कर पाए जो खुद बना नहीं पा रहे हैं जिनके घर पूरा पूरा कोविड पेशेंट काफ़ी सारे हैं तो उनके लिए हमने ये प्लान किया और उसी तरह से सोसाइटी ग्रुप पे एक मैसेज कन्वे किया कि जिसको भी सुविधा चाहिए वो मेरे फ़ोन नंबर पे कांटेक्ट कर सकता है और उसके बाद से हमने ये मुहिम स्टार्ट कर दी इंडिया ऑन थर्सडे रिपोर्टेड फोर हंड्रेड ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी टू न्यू कोविड नाइन्टीन केसेज हाउ एवर थ्री हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी नाइन थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड एंड थर्टीन डिस्चार्ज आफ्टर रिकवरिंग फ्रॉम दी डेडली वायरस द कंट्री रिकॉर्डेड थ्री थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड एंड एटी डेथ्स इन द लास्ट ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स एज पर हेल्थ मिनिस्ट्री डेटा वेल दैट सॉल्व वी हैव फॉर यू फ्रॉम साउथ एशिया दिस इवनिंग Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com/asianewsline and follow us on twitter at asianewsline that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time tomorrow good night subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button